Hey, what is up guys? Shady Wags here, and I really struggled with whether or not I should make this video. I've had this video on the back burner for about two weeks now, and I kept putting it off. And the reason is, in Fishing Sim World, the online tournaments are a huge part of the game, more so than any other fishing game I've played to date. I know I released a couple other videos on um, how to catch big pike and on match play, but then I started thinking about it. And if I was to release all my tips and tricks, my fishing hot spots and what hooks and lures to use, I felt like it might kind of be compromising the tournaments. Now, in Fishing Planet, I didn't see any problem with releasing guides because I don't think the majority of people who play that game anyways play it for the tournaments. After going back and forth over it for a while, I finally decided I was going to go ahead and release these guides because of two reasons. The first one is, well, I saw that other people are putting their whole damn tournament play out on YouTube. I'm not sure if people really sit and watch 60 minutes of video game fishing, but they're out there. And if they're doing the things that I'm doing, and I'm sure they're eventually going to, well, then people are going to find out anyways. The next reason, because on PC, people are cheating. It's sad that people feel they have to use hacks to win at a fishing game. I know it still happens in Fishing Planet. Luckily, I think whatever these people are doing in Fishing Sim World, Dovetail caught it because a lot of those scores got wiped out in the last week's tournaments. So I'm going to go ahead and give these out because eventually over time, everyone's going to figure this stuff out anyways. And I think there's still some randomness to the game that will affect scoring. So what I'm going to show you is a largemouth bass hotspot on Lake Boulder. Also, I'm going to show you what line and lure you need to be using. I know a lot of people have been saying it doesn't matter what gear you use. Well, it does, and this is going to prove it without a doubt. So we're going to start at Darby Boat Ramp, and we want to head east to Rock End. And you'll see this land formation up here. We're going to head for that, and you want to park your boat right at the entrance going into the uh, alleyway there. So we'll just head up there right now. I'll show you. So just park your boat right here facing into this alley. This area right here is primarily all largemouth bass. You will catch some smallmouth here, but mostly largemouth. All you need to do is just keep casting out into different directions into this lane. The fish in this area are moving east to west, so if you just cast out into this area, you're going to catch a lot of largemouth bass. Now when you show up, there may not be any fish on the finder and it may seem like it's a dead area here. You can do a couple things. One, you can just wait it out, just keep casting, and eventually you're gonna get a bite. And once you get one bite, then it seems to just kinda set things off. Fish will start you know, moving into the area after you get that first bite. Another thing you can do is just kinda boat around the area and do a couple random casts. That seems to stir them up and get them moving. I'm not sure if that actually works, but I've done it. So, you know, maybe it does, I don't know. But eventually the fish are going to show up and they're going to start moving through this area. And you're just going to stay in the same spot for the entire hour. There's no need to move. There's no need to go out and hunt for fish. You're just going to stay right in the spot. For your line, I found 10 pound Guru Pulse Mono line works the best. I saw that some people were using the 30 to 50 pound braided line and you don't need to use that. One big issue with this game is there's two styles of fishing being combined into one game but they didn't separate out what is used for what. Also, they didn't put any limits on what line can go on what reel. 
And that 30 to 50 pound test is for those 70 pound carp. It's not for 10 pound bass. You can still use that 50 pound test and you're still gonna catch fish. But I found out after many, many casts that using the more appropriate line, I caught more fish and I caught bigger fish than I was with the higher test line. Another misconception is that lures don't matter, that you know you can use any lure and you're gonna catch the same stuff. For example, if you use a spinner bait here at Boulder Lake, you're gonna catch a ton of bass. This is a numbers lure, but the weight of those bass are gonna be all over the place. And out of all the lures that I've used, I don't think I've ever caught a trophy largemouth with a spinner bait. Also, the spinner bait is gonna catch really big pike and it'll catch perch. If you use a worm, you're gonna catch a lot of trophy smallmouth bass and largemouth bass, ranging from three pounds up to around 10 pounds but you're mostly going to catch smallmouth bass. Even though this is one of my favorite lures, it's the only lure I've ever caught a 15 pound bass off of. That was not here though, that was at Lake Johnson, but still, I really like this lure. Another good lure is the Rattletrap Red Crawfish. With that lure, you're going to catch pretty much just all largemouth bass. The weights are going to range from three pounds up to around 10 pounds problem with this lure is that it's a slow sinking lure, which means you're going to be spending a lot of time just waiting for it to sink. And we're pressed for time here. We only have 60 minutes. So that's the drawback to using the rattle trap. Another one of my personal favorites is the Ben Parker Shattered Glass Gold. This is a heavy lure, so it's quick sinking and it will pull in bass from 3 pounds up to 10 pounds off the bottom of the lake, but it will also pull in big pike. Another one I use a lot is the D-Bomb Desert Storm. It is a quick sinking lure and it seems to be the most consistent out of all these lures at targeting largemouth bass from 5 to around 8 pounds. Now out of all these lures and the thousands and thousands of casts and the thousands of fish caught, I never caught a largemouth bass over 10 pounds at Lake Boulder with any of these lures until I use the popper. The popper will catch 11 pound bass, but the popper will also catch bass under one pound where I never caught anything under one pound with all the other lures. The popper does catch a lot of small bass. It will also catch perch and it will catch small pike. So what happens with the popper is you go a long period of time catching really small fish, then you tend to catch a really big bass. But in this tournament, it's a numbers game and the more fish you pull in, the better chances you have of hitting a big one. And since the popper is a topwater lure, you're gonna get more casts in 60 minutes than you are with the other lures. I use all three poppers when I'm fishing. I just kind of swap them out intermittently when I feel like one's not hitting as well. Or after I catch a big bass, I'll swap out to another. So that's how you're gonna score high in the bass tournament at Boulder Lake. Go to Rock In, use the poppers with the 10 pound Guru Pulse, and the rest is really just up to luck on how many 11 pound bass you're gonna be able to catch in an hour. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up button, and until next time, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one.
Yeah. Shady Wax got your back. It's so entertaining. You need to subscribe to Got Your Back Gaming Gameplay and reviews. Even doing walkthroughs. This the best gaming channel. I'm just telling you the truth. PS4, Xbox One, or even PC. Plenty tips, all the tricks. This is just what you need.